three, two, one. Okay, so welcome back to the Data Professor YouTube channel. My name is Chinin Nanta Senamad, and I'm an Associate Professor of Bioinformatics. And in this video, I'm going to talk about how you can develop a web application powered by machine learning for the Boston Housing dataset. So without further ado, we're starting right now. Okay, so today we're going to create a simple web application that is powered by machine learning. And we're going to use the Boston Housing dataset as our example. So in your data science learning journey, you probably have came across the Boston Housing dataset. So let's take a quick look. So the Boston Housing dataset is comprised of 506 rows, 14 columns. And so the 14 columns are provided here. So these are the descriptions of the 14 columns. And the target response that we're going to predict is called the median value of owner-occupied homes in $1,000 units. So if you would like some more details, read these resources. And so let's dive into the code. Okay, so let me open up my Atom text editor. All right, so let's have a look at the code. So the code is 86 lines. So I provided you some bonuses here. So aside from making the prediction, we're also going to provide you the understanding behind the prediction. Okay, so these will be in about 10 lines of code and it's using the SHAP library. So actually the entire code for the web application for predicting the house price is 71 lines of code. So actually we could make it fewer lines of code if we just deleted the extra spacing that I have made here. So like for example, if I just do it like this, then I would save a lot of spaces. But I'm going to use excessive lines in order to make the code look as simple as possible. Okay, so let's get started. So the first six lines of code, as we see here, are for importing the various libraries. So the first line is we're going to import Streamlit as ST. Line number two, we're going to import Pandas as PD. So line number three, we're going to import the SHAP library. And the SHAP library will provide you the understanding behind the prediction. Number four, we're going to import matplotlib.pyplot as PLT. Line number five, we're going to import the data set from sklearn. And line number six, we're going to import the random forest regressor from sklearn.ensemble. Okay, so let me run this web application so that you could see it side by side with the code. So let me click on the search and then type in CMD. I'm going to go into my environment for running data science. So I'm going to activate my environment called DP. So for those of you, you don't have DP as your environment. So you can create your own environment and then when you have already created that, you will activate it using conda activate DP, okay? So I might probably make a future video about how you can create environments in conda. So maybe a brief teaser. So the reason for using environment is that we don't want to mess up our computer. So for example, if we installed libraries that might influence the version number of other dependency library, so that might ruin your other data science project. So for example, if you're using pandas 1.0 in one project, and then in the other project, you require Panda 0.93. And so there will be incompatibility issues, right? So it's working for one version, but then when you install another library, which is depending on 0.93, then it's not going to work when you have Pandas 1.0. So in order to counter that, it would be best to run a different data science project in a different environment. Okay, so different meaning that not every single project that you're running, you have to create a new environment, but you're going to create a new environment if you're using different libraries. Okay, so like for example here in this tutorial, I'm using predominantly sklearn and streamlit. So whenever I do tutorials about sklearn and streamlit, I would use this particular environment. Okay, so let's continue. So I have already activated the environment and I'm gonna move into the desktop here and then I'm gonna run the code. Streamlit run and then the code name is Boston house. All 
All right, so I just type in the first few character, hit on the tab, and then it's going to auto fill for you. Hit on enter, and then we're going to load up the local version. All right, so this is the web application that we're developing. Okay, so I'm not sure why feature importance is not shown here. Try loading it again. It's running. All right, feature importance is loaded. So this is the web app. Let's have it side by side. All right, here. So lines number eight through 13 right here is going to be corresponding to the title of the web page, which is right here. So line number nine, we're using the hashtag, which is a equivalence to the H1 heading in HTML, and it is called Boston House Prize Prediction App. And then in the normal text, we're going to type in this app predicts the Boston House Prize. And then in markdown language, we're using two asterisks, which is equivalent to bolding the text. Okay. If I make it in only one asterisk, it will be in italic. See, it'll be in italic. Okay, so I'm just undoing it that. All right, and then in lines number 16, we're going to import the Boston House data set, and then we're going to split that into X and Y data frames. So the X data frame will contain only the independent variables or the X variables. So sometimes you call these as the input features. And then in the Y variable here, we're going to have the target. And the target here is the median value of the house price. All right, and on line number 22 until line number 52, it is the side panel right here. So line number 22, it is the header of the side panel, specify input parameters. So lines number 24 until 52, we're defining a custom function for accepting user input features. So here we see that we have the 13 features and then the 13 features will accept input here. So we're gonna make use of the st.sidebar.slider and then as the input argument, we're going to have the name of the feature, crim. And then the next is the minimum value, the maximum value, and the mean value. So why do we need to add these values here? Minimum, maximum, and the mean. So the minimum value here is the value that you're going to see here at the lower limit of the slider. And then the max value will be at the upper limit of the slider. And the mean value will be the default value that we're going to put into the input parameters. Okay. So the mean value of crim is 3.61, right? But once we change this, then the prediction will be modified. So we're going to use the same logic for the remaining input features. And then finally, we're going to put all of the features here into a data frame. And the data frame will be returned here. And then we're going to make use of the custom function. And then we're going to call it DF. We're going to assign the default input features here into the DF data frame. And then in lines number 59, it's going to be corresponding to here specified input parameters. Line number 60 will be printing out the DF. Line number 61 will be printing out this long horizontal line as a divider. And line number 64 until 67, we're going to build a random forest model. We're going to train the model on line number 65. And then we're going to make the prediction on line number 67. So a point in note here is that a model will be built every time the input parameters are modified. So in order to improve the code, let me make it your homework. Try to create the model outside of Streamlit web app file that you're seeing here. Make a pickle file, save it as .pkl, and then you want to load that pickle file into this web app so that you don't have to rebuild the model every time. Okay, so you just built the model once, you read it in to the web app, the PKL file, and then you will apply the PKL file, which is the model, to make the prediction. 
using the input parameters that you specify in the sidebar. Okay, so think of that as your homework and let me know in the description how that went. All right, so line number 69, you're going to see the header here, prediction of the median value. And then you're gonna make the st.write to print out the prediction value, which is 20. 0.084 and then finally in the remaining 10 lines of code we're going to print out the plots provided by the SHAP library. So line number 75 and 76 is going to extract the SHAP values. Line number 78 is going to print out the header here feature importance. Line number 79 is going to print the header of the plot, I mean the title of the plot. Line number 80 is going to make a feature importance plot. And then finally, we're going to see the typical feature importance plot that we normally see when we're using random forest. So here, you're not going to see how it is contributing to the overall prediction. For example, you're going to see that LSTAT is important, RM is important, but then you're not going to see important in what aspect. Are they contributing positively or negatively to the predicted values. So in the SHAP plot here, you're going to see that LSTAT is contributing relatively equal on the negative aspect and the positive aspect. But for the feature importance plot using the SHAP value, you're going to see the relative distribution on whether it contributed to the negative or the positive side of the feature importance. Okay, so something handy and useful to see. Okay, so if you're finding value in this video, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't yet done so. Hit on the notification bell in order to be notified of the next video. And as always, the best way to learn data science is to do data science. And please enjoy the journey. Thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe, and share. And I'll see you in the next one. But in the meantime, please check out these videos.